All right, guys, here we go. I've got 15 minutes, so this is a homework question section 6 or C6 unit review speed run. So let's let's go for it. Number one, why is it necessary to connect a voltmeter in parallel with a circuit component? Okay, um, this is something that I did go over um, on the last video, um, but we'll go ahead and talk about it briefly here. Let's say we have a resistor and a voltmeter. Again, the voltmeter has to measure the electric pressure difference from here to here. And it's only going to do that if it has the same pressure difference from there to there. Okay, so the voltmeter has to have the same pressure difference as that circuit component does. And so the only way that we can get it to have the same pressure difference as that circuit component is if it is connected in parallel. Okay, so that is pretty much the reason. Number two, using my data from activity three, plot a graph of voltage versus current for two different resistors on the same set of axes. Let's say that I have Rx in red and Ry in blue. Okay, there are two different resistors. Let's say one of them has something like that, and Ry is a little bit different, a higher slope. Okay, remember that voltage equals current times resistance. So in that case, that means that the slope of my line is going to be equal to the resistance. What's different about the two graphs? Well, the slope. That is what is different about the two graphs. The slope is different. Describe the appearance of a graph of a resistor that has a much greater resistance than either Rx or Ry. Well, if the slope is what tells me the resistance, and the slope is equal to the resistance, then if my resistance is much greater than either Rx or Ry, then it's going to have a higher slope. Okay, if you do have any questions so far, please don't hesitate to hop on to the office hours later today or tomorrow. Number three, why is it not a good idea to connect an ammeter in parallel with a circuit component? That is a little bit trickier of a question that I don't think we've covered explicitly at this point. But if I connect an ammeter in parallel with this resistor here, and my ammeter has a very low resistance, then all of my current is going to take the path of least resistance. So all my current is going to go through the ammeter in that case. And it's going to be a very, very high amount of charge. That's essentially making a short circuit. And that tends to break an ammeter, so it's not good. Okay, number four. Um, is this big circuit right here, and we have to fill in these voltage values. While you do this, um, the main thing that you have to keep in mind is Kirchhoff's voltage law, or Kirchhoff's loop rule, as we sometimes call it, which says that if I have a loop like this one, the voltage drop across each resistor has to be equal to the voltage rise across the battery. So if my battery gives me 4.5 volts, then between these three bulbs, I have to use 4.5 volts. Since each one of them is the same, all three of those are going to use the same amount of that voltage. So each one of these is going to be 1.5 volts. Uh, 1.5, 1.5, and 1.5. If we add those all together, and we start from here, and we go all the way down here, then that should add all the way up to 4.5 volts. 
the same as our battery. If I color coded it, it would look like this. Okay, we can do that on the voltmeter too. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit more clear if I leave the lines off of the voltmeter though, so let's not do that. Okay, um, these ones are going to be somewhere between orange and yellow and green and yellow. Um, see, we have three bulbs, but regardless, we know that the jump from red to this orange and from this orange to this green, as we have it shown here, that's going to be a drop of 1.5 volts for this circuit. Okay, from red to yellow on these round bulbs, that's going to be just half of this. Again, it does just have to um, total up to 4.5 volts. Since these are two identical round bulbs, we're going to split that evenly in two pieces. So each of these is going to have to be 2.25. Number five, based on my experience, describe how I know that a battery is generally a source of constant electric pressure difference. Um, the main way that we know that it is generally a source of constant electric pressure difference is because if I have this circuit, okay, with just one resistor, as opposed to this circuit, should probably keep the number of cells in the battery the same, as opposed to this circuit here, which has two resistors, the battery is going to read, um, we'll say, three volts on both of these. Both of them are going to be red to blue. The only difference between these two is that the amount of current, the charge flowing through that circuit is different. Okay, so when I add, when I change the resistance of a circuit, it doesn't change the electric pressure difference on the battery. What it does normally is it changes the current, but not the electric pressure difference in general. Number six, based on my experience, how do I know that an ammeter is a device that can be used to measure flow rate? Um, well, if I plug it into a circuit, it reads a number of amps. Um, I don't really know how to say that other than that. So, yeah, that is what it does. Number seven, about halfway through my speed run here. Consider the circuit at right, which contains five identical bulbs. Okay, one, two, three, four, and five. Is the current greatest through points X, Y, or Z, and where is it least? In order to do this one, what we have to think about is the resistance of each one of these branches. Um, you see that each one is a point in its branch before it connects to this wire down here, the trunk wire. Okay, so we are just looking at the current through each branch here. X is our kind of control branch. This is our just one bulb by itself. Two bulbs in series we know has more resistance than just one bulb by itself. So we know that Y has more resistance than X, and so Y is going to have less current than X. On Z, the third branch though, we have two bulbs in parallel, which we know that when we add two bulbs in parallel, what we do is we actually decrease the resistance, which is going to increase the current through um, point Z. So in order of um, greatest to least current, since Z has the least resistance, Z is going to have more current than X, which has more current than Y. Again, that is because the resistance of each branch, the resistance of Z is much less 
than the resistance of x and y. B, if we put a shorting wire across bulb 5, what will be the effect on each of the other bulbs? So just for clarity, that means we are putting a wire right here. And what that's going to do is if you track the available paths that the current has, well, the charge can go through this path, it can go through this path, it can go through this path, or this path, or finally this last path here. And there's something special about that path. With that shorting wire placed there, this path that I have highlighted right now has zero resistance. Since this path has zero resistance, all of the charge is going to go through this path. None of the charge is going to go through these other paths because those paths do have some resistance. But this path right here has no resistance, and so all of the charge will go through that path, and all of these other bulbs are going to turn off. Contrarily, if we put a bulb right here at point P, then what we are doing is we are putting a resistor right here. Okay, And so that means that when I have this loop, if I think about Kirchhoff's loop rule, if I have that loop right there, then this right here, that bulb, is going to take some of the voltage from each of these loops that we can make. Since that bulb is going to take some of the voltage of each of those loops, it's going to actually decrease the electric pressure difference for all of the bulbs and make all five of the bulbs get dimmer. Number eight. Actually, I think that I'm going to cut it off here um, since I'm at about 12 and a half minutes. So I'm going to cut off my speed run here and um, this is going to have to get split into two videos. Join me for part two.